Hello, hello again ladies and gentlemen, Chaos Wolf here and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Today we are going to be taking a look at a couple of things. Namely, we are going to be having a look at um, our modules tab over here and our fire groups. Uh, the reason we're going to be having a look at our uh, modules is for the primary reason, if you look at the very bottom of the uh, of this particular window, you will see the my output and usage um, uh, bars. My output shows that my power generator is undamaged and generating 100% of its uh, the power that it can generate. The usage shows that I am 4%. I, I'm taxing overtaxing the generator by 4%, which means my uh, my ship's trying to draw too much power from the generator. And what happens at home when your um, an, appl uh, an appliance or something tries to draw too much uh, power from the from the circuit? Let's see what happens when I pull my uh, pull out my hard points. Oh look, the circuit breaker's gone almost. <laughs> so basically, my uh, because I'm trying to draw too much power from my ship, my ship is shut down. So you can see there that I've got uh, my my oxygen counter, oxygen depleted in uh, just under 15 minutes. So if I didn't put my uh, my weapons back in like this, uh, basically my pilot would, uh, would suffocate to death. So I'd have 15 minutes to get back to an orbital and uh, or at least 15 minutes to put my weapons back in. But that's not the standard. The standard for any ship is five minutes. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look over here whilst the shields recharge. Let's put their power into the systems to get that going faster. But we can see what's going on here. Um, you can see that um, each of these has different columns. You've got the name, the, the type, which shows you where the power is being drawn from, whether it's going to be systems, weapons, or engines. Uh, you've got the percentage of power that that is taking up from your generator and then you've got priority and priority is uh, how important that particular system is um, to the running of your ship so what happens is when let's say your power generator gets damaged or at the moment where when you're taking too much power out of your generator you decide what's get shuts down what shut down first and what online. thank you computer uh, what gets shut down first and what doesn't. So let's go through. Uh, the way I like to do this is to see what is necessary for... Uh, I like to have set three different categories. The first one is what's necessary for combat, what's necessary for real space travel, and what's generally only really necessary in, uh, in frame shift. So what I like to do is I go down Take, uh, and have a look. Thrusters, obviously, you need those to move around, so they are needed in combat. Shield generator, that's needed in combat. Obviously, your weapons. Power distributor uh, is really uh, is extremely useful, so, but um, you can function without it. So usually, I set this to number two. So what that means is, if I pulled out my weapons now, let's see if that's actually one second. Let's yeah. So let's uh, let's see if what happens when I pull out my weapons now. I've only changed my power distributor setting to. My ship hasn't shut down. Why is that? If we take a look down to the system engine and weapons section, you'll notice that there's no pips there anymore, which basically means my ship has decided. Oh wait, um, you take try and take out too much power. Oh, I see you set your. Uh, your power distributor to, to, to number two. So we'll shut that down and let's see if that actually uh, stay, uh, gets us back into the green. And it has. So all my other systems are perfectly fine. It's only decided to shut down the, um, the power distributor. And you can see that there because it's turned red. But we'll carry on going down. Cargo hatch. I don't even have any, uh, any cargo bays. So I'll set that to three because that's completely unnecessary. But what you've noticed that's done is that's turned the uh, the power distributor back on. So we've got three settings now. We've got one, two, and three. 
Number one is the most important. They will always be on unless uh, basically unless the shit hits the fan really and your power and your uh, power plant's been damaged. Uh, number two is uh, what will shut down. Uh, what will shut down if the power plant starts taking more damage, a little bit of damage. And number three will turn off basically as soon as you pull your weapons out for me. Life support, I will. That's f almost almost completely useful. But because I've got fifteen minutes, I'm going to set that to number two. If I only had five minutes, I'd keep that as a number one. But um, if I'm just trying, if I'm damaged, that, uh, that damaged, and I'm trying to get away, 15 minutes should be more than enough time for me to get back to an orbital. Uh, frame shift drive, I am going to be setting that to number two because um, basically, unless I'm really damaged, uh, I should be fine because you can't use your frame shift drive whilst your weapons are out anyway. So as soon as you put your uh, your weapons back in, because that's what's happening. As soon as you draw, pull your weapons out, you are taking, putting extra strain on your generator. If you put your uh, weapons away, then you're not. So that's the the main thing there. So life support, frame shift, fuel scoop. Uh, I can't use that in real space. So I'm going to set that to number three. So that automatically gets shut off when I pull out my um, my hard points. Shield cell bank. Now that is a combat necessity, so I'm going to keep that as number one. Sensors, they're well, very important, but they're nowhere near as important as anything else for combat. So I'm going to set that to a number two, because if I, I'm getting damaged, I don't really give it. I don't really care too much about uh, fighting too much. I'm just not want to get out of there. Uh, wake scanner again. I'm going to set that to a number two. Kill warrant scan. I'm going to keep that as a number one because. Um, uh, it's a combat thing for me. I need to uh, to scan things. I don't know. I'll set that to number two because it's still it's still just a scanner. And frame shift drive interdictor that doesn't work in real space at all. So I'm just going to change that to a three. And the next one then is the power plant. We can't really change mo we can't change that at all because as you see it says it has power draw of zero percent because that's where we're getting our power from. So you can see at the bottom, it's uh, it, now it says we've got the usage, and you've got three little sections to it now. You've got number one, which is the big section. That is the vast how much of the power we have. That's um, the percentage of the bar. That's how much of the percentage of power draw is in the uh, number one section. So that's the most important section. Number two is the second largest, and that's the one we can we kind of want, but we can do without if. Um, if things are starting to go wrong. And number three is stuff we can just do without um, in combat or out of frame shift. So pretty much that's the way I um, keep my ship flying even though I'm technically over, over power usage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hard points back in again. You'll see that everything that is red is going to, start, is going to turn back to, uh, to orange. As soon as everything... There we go. So I'm back up to everything being perfectly useful. Now the only way things are going to get really bad in this is if um, basically your power plant gets damaged. So that's going to be where things are starting to go weird, which is why I've got the number two group. But yeah, anyway, enough on that because it's starting to get a little bit too complicated, I imagine. So what we're going to do is we are not going to press that button because that was the completely wrong one. We are going to move over to the fire group section. Now, what you can see is for those of you that are uh, unfamiliar with this uh, with this panel, is we've got we've got our fire groups and our weapon groups. Uh, the fire groups are in the columns, so fire group one, fire group two, and you've got the weapons here down down the side. Number one here is your uh, primary uh, fire group uh, weapon group, and number two is your secondary weapon group. Kind of self-explanatory, but uh, I feel like I need to say it. Uh, but you only get two. You've only got number one, number two, or nothing. Uh, there's no fire group three, uh, weapon group three even. And what that means is um, basically both my beam lasers and my multi cannons are on their own individual. Uh, 
uh, fire, uh, fire buttons. So my beam lasers will both fire on one button. We'll, we'll just have a look here. We'll get my weapons back out again. And actually change over to my weapons. So if I pull my if I pull my primary trigger, which is uh, the actual trigger button on my uh, flight stick, I fire off my uh, my beam lasers. There we go. Now, if I press my uh, my secondary fire button, which is the one on my thumb, I I fire my uh, my multi cannons. So I can basically use different weapons for the different situations that I need. So let's say I come in to an unidentified single source and I find a ship with, with its shields up. I will use my beam lasers to take down its shields and then when its shields are down I will use the multi cannons because because the beam lasers are way better at knocking knocking shields down because they do thermal damage uh, which affects shields a lot more than uh, the kinetic weapons which do the projectile weapons which are kinetic. The kinetic weapons, such as uh, such as my multi cannons, are way better at actually taking out the ship itself, not its shields. So my multi cannons do less. Oops, wrong one again. Multi cannons do less damage to uh, shields, but beam lasers do less damage to hulls. So yeah, lasers for lasers for shields, cannons for hulls. But what you can see down here is I've also got this extra little one on, which is the same on both, uh, both my uh, fire groups. But we'll come back to that in a second. But what we have here as well is uh, my kill warrant scanner and my frameshift wake scanner, and I've got them on a secondary uh, fire group. So what I can do is I can press this button here, and that will bring up my kill warrant scanner and my wake scanner. So I basically have this set up. So as soon as I jump in, I can uh, I can scan them to see if they've got any warrants. If they have, I'll just quickly switch over to my weapons. But yeah, I've I've basically done a, a video previously on both the kill warrant scanner and the wakes and the wake scanner. So yeah, I'll link that uh, in the top corner just now. But um, but yeah, so we won't talk about that too much more now. But the extra bit I've got down here is uh, actually no back the reason actually, sorry, the reason I actually have the uh, kill warrant scanner and the frame shift wake scanner on a secondary fire group is because if I put them both on, let's say I put them like this, on the same fire group, what would happen is uh, both your scanners and your weapons would go off at the same time. So if you're trying to scan, what would happen is if you if you pulled, if I was, let's say if I was trying to actually scan a clean vessel somewhere to see if I had um, any bounties anywhere, and I press my secondary fire button, what would happen is my multi cannons would go off at the same time. And and if the we don't really want that to happen because before we've scanned it, we might get set as it's uh, marked as a clean ship. We'll get set marked as wanted, and we don't want that. So which is why we have the scanners set on a completely separate fire group where we cannot accidentally shoot them. But moving back on down here, we can see that we have. Uh, on both of these, we have the frame shift drive interdictors on uh, both of these. So, if my scanners uh, can't go on the same fire group as my weapons, and I can't have two different things on the same button, why have I got my frame shift drive interdictor on the, the same buttons as both my multi cannon and my uh, kill warrant scanner? Well, that's because the frame shift drive interdictor is a little bit special. Um, the drive interdictor actually functions in frame shift drive. So when you're flying around in supercruise, uh, that's the only time it works. It's used to drag other vessels out of frame shift, and when you get into frame, when you into real space, it does doesn't do anything. It just doesn't work. So that's why I've got it set on uh, fire group two on both of these. So um, fire gr uh, weapon group two, it only actually works while I'm in frame while I'm in supercruise. When I jump out, my ship automatically jumps straight back. To the uh, to the other to the uh, to the default for real space, which are these two. So these two will only work in frame shift. It just saves me having to have an extra fire group, and um, is an absolutely amazing time saving thing because I can be on either fire group. It doesn't matter, and I can still use my frame shift drive interdict it. So yeah, that's basically how I 
run around keeping my ship going. So yeah, that's a basic, uh, well, a bit, a bit more than a basic rundown of both the module, ta uh, module tab and the fire groups tab. Well, I hope you found this video uh, useful. Um, if you have enjoyed it and you found it useful, please do consider hitting that like button. It really does help this cha help the channel out more than you can imagine. And uh, also, please do consider hitting the uh, the subscribe button because again, that helps the channel out. But this has been uh, Chaos Wolf. Thank you very much for watching and again listening to me uh, ramble on more than anything else. But I do hope this video has actually uh, helped you understand more. Um, about the ships and how the, how the power management systems work. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. This has been Chaos Wolf. I hope you have a great day and I will see you around.